Good morning, students. Today we will see the further topics from Chapter Seven of Civics, that is, understanding marginalization. So the next topic is Adivasis and stereotyping. What is stereotyping? It means fixing or setting an idea about a particular type of group, person, or thing, like a preconceived notion about something. which is often not true in reality we already know about adivasis now just join these two together that means how are adivasis being stereotyped that we'll study so in india we usually showcase adivasi communities in very particular ways thus during school functions or other official events or in books and movies adivasis are invariably portrayed in very stereotypical ways like they are portrayed wearing colorful costumes headgears and through their dancing taking the example from the book about helen and soma a fictional story that we read in the previous video where helen questions that why adivasis are shown only as dancing and wearing colorful costumes besides this we seem to know very little about their realities of their lives we don't know the harsh realities of their life rather we just see their costumes their colorful faces and headgears and of course their dancing this often wrongly leads to people believing that they are exotic primitive and backward so it is belief of people or they have stereotyped the adivasis in such a way that they think that these adivasis are primitive they only wear colorful costume and we also blame them for lacking in advancements we often consider them that they are resistant to change or they are resistant to adapt to new ideas but in reality this is not the case there are much more things to be known about to be aware about these adivasis next topic is adivasis and development as you have already read in your history textbook forests were absolutely crucial to the development of all empires and settled civilizations in india metal ores like iron and copper gold and silver coal and diamonds invaluable timber most medicinal herbs and animal products such as wax lac honey and animals themselves these all came from the forest that means people were totally dependent on these forests in addition to this the continuation of life also depended heavily on forest that helped recharge many of india's rivers and is becoming clearer now crucial to the availability and quality of our air and water forests they cover a major part of our country till the 19th century and the adivasis had a deep knowledge of these as well as they have the access to and control over most of these vast tracts at least till the middle of 19th century so these adivasis they have deep knowledge of a forest and they were the hunters and actually the gatherers and lived like nomads so their deep knowledge of forest made them indispensable to the rulers of various empires during the pre colonial period in india this meant that they were not ruled by large states and empires instead often empires heavily depended on adivasis for the crucial access to forest resources now this is radically contrary to our image of adivasis today as somewhat marginal and powerless communities we consider these adivasis as powerless 
and they are the marginalized group in today's era but during that time they were having very good access or knowledge or control over the vast tracts of the forest till mid 19th century see the condition of these adivasis that was there in the pre colonial period now it has changed over these past 200 years because when these forest laws were implemented and because there was urbanization going on now the land was also required where these adivasis lived it was required for mining purpose so because of various purposes these adivasis were displaced from their original lands or forests in the pre colonial world where they were traditionally ranged hunters gatherers and nomads and lived by shifting agriculture and also cultivating in one place although these remain for the past 200 years adivasis have been increasingly forced through the economic changes or the forest policies and political force applied by the state and private industry they are now forced to migrate to live as workers in plantations or workers in construction sites or workers in industries as well as like domestic helpers for the first time in history they do not control or have much direct access to the forest territories which they initially used to have during the mid 19th century or till mid 19th century see from 1830s onwards adivasis from jharkhand and adjoining areas moved in very large numbers to various plantations in india and the world such as mauritius the caribbean and even australia india's tea industry became possible with their labor in assam today there are 70 lakh adivasis in assam alone the story of this migration is full of extreme hardship torture heartbreak and even death for example an estimate tells us in the 19th century alone there were around 5 lakh adivasis who had perished who had died or destroyed in these migrations now we'll see that how along with development there were various problems that were faced by these tribals forest lands have been cleared for timber and to get land for agriculture and industry so the forests were being cleared up for setting up industries adivasis have also lived in areas that are rich in mineral and other natural resources so these are taken over for mining and other large industrial projects so the places where the adivasis were living they were residing those forests were rich in minerals and other natural resources so they were taken they were snatched these forests were snatched from or taken from these uh, adivasis for mining purpose and other industrial projects powerful forces have often colluded to take over tribal land powerful forces they were taking the control having the control over these tribal lands much much of the time the land is taken away forcefully and procedures are not followed so as we have read in the beginning of the chapter about the example of the fictional story of uh soma and uh, helen where the grandfather recalls his story and tells that how they were being uh, displaced from or they were just um, thrown out of their lands or forest and the powerful forces they take away the land forcefully and they do not follow the procedures also that means they illegally take away the land of these adivasis according to official figures more than 50% of persons displaced due to mines and mining projects are tribal so the people who are displaced 
that means the people who were forced or they were compelled to move from their homes for big development projects including dams and mining so these people were majorly the tribals Another decent a recent survey report by organizations working among adivasis shows that 79% of persons displaced from the states of Andhra Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Odisha and Jharkhand are tribals. So there is another survey which report and the report of that survey tells us that 79% of people that are displaced they belong to the states of Andhra Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Odisha and Jharkhand and they all were the tribal people huge tracts of their lands have also gone under the waters of hundreds of dams that have been built in independent india in the northeast their lands remain highly militarized india has 104 national parks covering 40501 square kilometers and 543 wildlife sanctuaries covering 118918 square kilometers these are areas where tribals originally lived but were evicted from when they continue to stay in these forests they are termed as encroachers so there were various um, problems that were faced by these uh, tribals so when the industrialization uh, was rapidly increasing forests need to be cleared and the people the tribals living there they were displaced from this forest they were forced to leave these forests then for the mining purpose also where the tribals basically lived in the regions such as jharkhand madhya pradesh odisha west bengal and these places were rich in uh, ores so for mining purposes the again these tribals were made to leave their lands for building a dams also many of these uh, tribals were displaced the forests were used another major issue was that since the northeast area it remains very uh, highly militarized why because unlike other parts of the country northeast states share boundaries with other countries such as bangladesh bhutan myanmar china so these uh, lands they remain highly militarized that is an area where the presence of armed forces is considerable now again for setting up national parks and wildlife sanctuaries again the forests were required so these tribals who were the original inhabitants of these forests they were forced to leave these forests or they were made to go and settle somewhere and if at all they used to continue to stay in this forest then they were termed as or they were considered as encroachers that is a person who unlawfully occupies a piece of land now see if losing their lands and access to forest means that tribals lose their main sources of livelihood and food so if their lands or their forests will be taken from them then they will lose their main source of livelihood the main source of getting food and shelter see the adivasis they used around 10000 plant species approximately 8000 species are used for medicinal purposes 325 are used as pesticides 425 as gums resins and dyes and 550 as fibers 3500 are edible so this entire knowledge uh, about the species of plants or the animals and the forest that will be totally wiped out if these adivasis lose their rights over forests but still having gradually lost access to their traditional homelands many adivasis have migrated to cities in search of work where they are employed for very low wages in local industries or at buildings or construction sites so since they were forced to leave their lands so many of the adivasis they went to 
uh, the or they migrated to the cities in search of work where they can work as workers in factories in local industries in building sites as construction workers or like domestic helps as a result they got caught in a cycle of poverty and deprivation 45% of tribal groups in rural areas and 35% in urban areas live below the poverty line this leads to deprivation in other areas many tribal children are malnourished to literacy among tribals is very low hence when these uh, tribals were not allowed to stay in forest so they moved to the cities in search of jobs in search of shelter but still they were given the jobs of working in factories working in industries as workers okay so they were also working in house how like a house help so they were ultimately caught in the cycle of poverty now they were are the deprived class and the children of these tribal people they are illiterate many of them are malnourished that is they did not get adequate nutrition of food so they are below poverty line when adivasis are displaced from their lands they lose much more than a source of income they lose their traditions and customs so not only the source of income not only they are economically weak but they have also lost their traditions and customs of the way of living and being they took our farming land they left some houses they took the cremation ground temple well and pond how will we survive says gobinda maran who was displaced due to a refinery project in orissa so the people they are not only physically deprived they are not economically deprived rather they are now losing their traditions and original customs the way they used to originally live as you have read there exists an interconnectedness between the economic and social dimensions of tribal life destruction in one sphere naturally impacts the other often this process of dispossession and displacement can be painful and violent for example if a group is socially deprived resulting in lack of opportunities for skill development and education this means that they will not have proper access to quality healthcare which in turn will not let them develop into a financially stable adult who otherwise is capable enough to ensure a better income thus the individual who is left behind in socio economic development also becomes economically deprived and this process of displacement or disposition it is very painful or sometimes very violent so children that's all for today's video the further topic